Hello, everybody. I am Solita Sims, and today I am making my first YouTube video, which is very weird. This does not mean I'm going to be making consistent content just yet. I hope that one day I can. I know I get asked that a lot. Unfortunately, I don't have really the best situation to be making consistent YouTube videos, as well as I am very busy with my personal life. But I always get asked about how I make my series videos and it's too much information to put into a TikTok because it's very tedious and meticulous and I want to go really into depth if I'm going to make a video on that. So I decided I would make a little YouTube video for you guys and go over pretty much all my knowledge about making my series videos and machinima. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. So yeah, welcome. I guess let's just get right into it. Disclaimer before I start that Machinima Guys is no joke. It is very, very time consuming. If you want to make it really sophisticated, it's going to take a significant amount of effort. I think after watching this, you'll understand why it takes so long. <laughs> it's it's a lot that goes into it. It's creating, you know, your story, the set, getting the sims ready, having a script, finding the animations, setting up all the animations, setting up all the sims. It's, it's, it's a lot. For those of you who want to know, uh, the recording software I use for my videos is typically the Xbox Game Bar or OBS, and the editing software I use for my videos is Final Cut Pro for Mac OS. If it's a shorter video or a video that really takes like little to no effort, sometimes I'll use InShot or CapCut on my iPhone. Other stuff I use for uploading, creating, anything like that, I use AirDrop to AirDrop my videos from my Mac to my iPhone. Um, obviously, I use my iPhone, I use my MacBook Air to edit how I basically transfer footage from this Windows computer to my Mac is by USB hard drive. And the computer I use is a VRLA Tech Legacy. I'll have it linked down below, and I'll also have my setup linked down below. Let's go over a few things that, a few mods that I use for my videos. Mods are an essential part of making a series. And these are the mods that I think are the most essential when it comes to making my series. MC Command Center is very important, as well as UI Cheats. The Tool Mod by Twisted Mexi is also super important. It's not required, I guess, it's more optional, but in my opinion, I think it's quite essential. Andrew's Pose Player and Sim Teleporter are required. Poses and or animations are obviously super required. You can find poses and animations on Tumblr, Pinterest, the, the Sims resource, Patreon. Andrew's Studio Effect Player is also optional. Um, I don't really use it that much, but I want to use it more. Reshade or G-Shade, totally optional. I use it a little bit. I don't use it while I'm playing the game, but I do use it for my series. And if you want, you can record your Sims' voices, which is a whole another thing <laughs> probably a whole another video i'd make i did a little tiktok tutorial i'll leave it in the description but if you want a more in-depth video on that i could do that as well if i'm forgetting anything i'll list it up below let's get started now i'm in my game i highly recommend creating a whole new save file solely for the purpose of filming a series <laughs> so i have four save files ignore like the thumbnails it happens when you have poses for thumbnails sometimes and i don't know which one it is but it just happens yeah so this is my legacy this is chaos and Sue's, which is like like where Deandra and Monroe and Mice himself and the Lacoste and all of them live. This is one of my TikTok saves and this is meant for something. It's blurred out. <laughs> but this is the main one I use for my series videos. So let's open it. It's not required to make a save, but I recommend it. So then you don't have your, you know, intermixing with your actual personal game playing save file. Let's go to a world or like a lot that hasn't been used. How about this one? So we're in create a sim now and you're going to get the sims you want for your machinima. I'm just going to download some sims that I have saved. For this demonstration, let's use our favorite serial killer, Deandra, young Deandra. This is her as a teenager. And let's use young Monroe. Aren't they adorable? So obviously before you start filming, you're gonna wanna make sure your sim is completely ready. They have the makeup, the hair, everything that you want. Mm -hmm. I recommend just going in and creating all the outfits you have planned so you don't have to constantly go back into create a sim and create those outfits because it's very annoying to do that. So just have all of them ready. She has quite some fits on right now. She has like gold school uniform. I guess you guys are kind of seeing a preview of 
her life in the series. All right, so they're moved in. Let's go ahead and go to their lot, and we're now going to build a set. All right, so we're here. Our Sims are here, and I've used this neighborhood a few times, as you can see. There is some other stuff going on here, some other sets. I actually don't remember what that's for. That's fine. We can make a set now. I'm not a builder. I hate building. I suck at it. It's not my thing. So I'm not gonna be building anything. I'm just gonna find a random room off the gallery and we can just use that for now. Oh, that's really pretty. I'm gonna save that. Let's just use this for now. And just plant it down below. And then after you install the Sim Teleporter mod, you could just type it in down below and these are the teleporters. This is what you're gonna use to move your sims around. Also place them, basically stack the sims on top of each other. So if there, there's an animation that requires two sims, like, I don't know, a kissing animation, um, obviously requires two sims. In order for the animation to work properly and look the way it should, you're going to have to stack a teleporter on top of each other. Cause I know some people have asked me, how do I get the teleporters to work with two sims? Cause like I do it like this and it doesn't work. You put one teleporter stacked on top of another. See how there's two? So I'm gonna put them in the room because <laughs> that's our set. And I'm going to put a bunch of extra teleporters, like a bunch out over here. So I don't have to go into build mode all the time and buy more because sometimes when you go into build mode, when you have a sim that's posed for an animation and then you put an item down, it resets the animation. Then you have to reposition your sims. You have to restart the animation all over again, find it, it's just annoying. I recommend just having a bunch on the lot available because you are able to move these in live mode. You don't have to go into build mode to move these. The teleporter mod is pretty straightforward. You just click on a teleporter and it'll say summon sim or teleport sim. Summon sim is for a sim that's currently not on the lot. So if you're gonna use like a random townie, you'd wanna press summon sim. But since we have the two sims that we want, we just have to press teleport. So I'm gonna press our household and I'm gonna teleport Deandra or Andrea and I'm gonna teleport Monroe. And if it looks weird like this, you've done it right. <laughs> Before you want to have your sims begin the animation, I recommend two things. One is to go into the game settings and turn off autonomy because sometimes things will happen, you know, how sims will walk off and randomly start talking to somebody that's walking in the neighborhood. I'd recommend turning autonomy off so they don't do anything. So that's step one. And then also, you know those really annoying idle animation sims do? Teenagers will take a selfie. The adults will laugh randomly. You wanna make sure that your sims aren't doing that before you start the animation because if one sim lags by doing some idle animation, that other sim is going to begin the animation while the other hasn't, and then your animation gets screwed up. So simply just press play and watch. That's an idle animation. They're moving around, they're like, ugh. Then when they stop like that, oh God, what happened? Oh my God, <laughs> Monroe <laughs> terrifies me when his skin filter is off. Let's remove that. You think she's ugly? <gasps> no way. <gasps> no, that is Monroe anyway. <laughs> That animation that they did was like an idle animation. Now that they're just standing there, they're ready to go. The Pose Player Mod by Andrew Studio comes in. So we're gonna tap on our sim, either one, and go to Pose by Pack. There's also this option that is Pose by Name. If you know the name, go ahead. But I never use that, I use Pose by Pack. And these are just kind of, I don't know what these are. I'm, maybe these are just like the game animations from EA. I have no clue, but I have a bunch of my own animations installed. And these are just a fraction of them, guys. I think I have like 500 total. Making a series means that you have to go through all of these and decipher which one is best for your scene. So if you're wondering why it's so time consuming, yeah, that's why. Let's find one for like kissing. I think I have one. It may look like kind of a mess, but it's pretty straightforward. Usually an animator will have a description of what the animation is, what's going on. Sometimes they'll even have the gender. They'll say like, oh, this animation is for the male, this is for the female. You can use it for like two females, two males, it doesn't really matter. But it just helps you understand that this animation is for one sim and this one is for another. So it looks like we have four in this pose pack or animation pack. Number one is the one hugging. It's an idle animation, meaning that they don't speak. 
The second one is the one being hugged, and it's also idle. And these two are the same as the other two, but they have talking involved. I think I wanna do the idle one. So I'm going to pick one of these for Deandra and the other one for Monroe. Let's do Deandra being the one being hugged. And then we exit out and it'll show over here that she's going to do that animation. Now we're gonna go to Monroe and we're gonna do the same exact animation. Go. And then he's gonna be the one that's hugging Idol. So now when you press play, I guess, or live mode, they should start hugging. There we go. Now the animation is playing. And it'll keep playing over and over and over again until you cancel it out for both parties. Isn't that cute? They're so cute. So that's the fundamentals of setting up your sims to do a certain animation. Now, recording that animation or taking screenshots, whatever. You're gonna wanna use something called the Sims 4 Cinematic Camera. And everybody has it in their Sims 4 PC game. How to get into the Cinematic Camera is very simple. You just press tab on your computer or your keyboard. Moving the camera is pretty simple. W goes forward, A goes left, S goes backwards, and D goes right. E goes up, Q goes down. Zoom in or out is X and Z or you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse either or i prefer the scroll wheel you can also move it by just you know using your mouse you can also play by pressing this button i don't know what this button is i'm just gonna put it on the screen and i'll start playing and then now i want a shot of monroe let's go behind deandra let's get a shot of monroe adorable now, what about that pesky plum bob? I don't want to see the plum bob. And when you have like only two sims in a household and you're only working with two sims, you're going to have the plum bob regardless of who you pick. And we don't want to see that in a professional machinima video. You have two options. A, you can either find a random sim nearby. Let's see, who's this? Hello, Jonathan Lachlan. We can pick Jonathan Lachlan over here and with the good help of the shift left click, we can add the sim to our family. Where is the button? Add the sim to the family. And then he's automatically gonna be added to our family. Oh, he's an alien, cool. We go back to Deandra and Monroe. We select Jonathan. The plumb bob is gone. But sometimes you don't wanna add another sim to your family. That's kind of, you know, annoying. So let me remove him. You do the same thing, shift and left click and then remove from family. Sometimes you don't wanna do that. So there is a cheat to get rid of the plumb bob or all headline effects. If you don't know how to use the Sims cheats, it's very simple. On my computer, it is control shift C to open up the cheat menu. Um, it might be different for yours. You might wanna just Google it. And the first thing you wanna do is press or type in testing, testing cheats on and cheats will be enabled. And the cheat to get rid of the plumb bob or any other headline effect, you simply type in headline effects off and then the plumb bob goes bye-bye. Another thing about the cinematic camera for The Sims 4 is that you can actually do some pretty cool stuff with it. So let's go into the camera. So there are set point using the five, six, seven, and eight numbered keys on your keyboard. Basically, if you were to, let's say I want a shot of Deandra, and I want the shot to go up here, like towards her, towards her face, and then pull away to maybe like, okay, the wall's in the way. I don't film with the walls down at all. I film with all walls up, but let's just, for this, for this tutorial, let's just do that. So if I want a shot of Deandra up close, and then I want to pull away like that. I can do that with the Sims 4 cinematic camera. You could do it manually. You know, you could just press W and move your mouse upwards, but it's not smooth. It's not as professional. It, it just doesn't look as good. So you can set points. How to do that is pretty simple. You can use five, six, seven, eight, the numbers to set these points. And you set them by, con uh, by pressing control, the button control on your keyboard and whichever number you want. So let's do control five over here. Pull away, and then let's do control six. Now when I press five, it's going to pan towards Deandra, just like it was a few seconds ago. 
and when I press six, it's gonna go back. Isn't that a beautiful cinematic shot? And to jump immediately from angle to angle, like if you don't wanna just like wait for it to just slowly go towards Deandra, if you press shift and whichever number, it'll immediately jump towards that angle. I love this. One of my favorite things about the cinematic camera. You can make these really interesting, slow, cool shots. And now I'm gonna show you something a little bit more advanced in the computer settings. So we're gonna leave the Sims real quick and I'm gonna show you something a little bit more advanced. I would only do this if you feel comfortable with doing this, okay? If you want to be able to manipulate these camera settings even more, you're going to have to go into the game files into your computer. In these game files, you can make the panning longer or shorter. I think the default that The Sims gives you is two or three seconds. Sometimes you want it longer though. Sometimes you want that pan from Deandra to last maybe 10 seconds for a more dramatic shot. You have to go into the game files in your computer to do that. You're gonna wanna go into your PC, this PC, and your local disk. You're gonna go into Program Files 86, Origin Games, The Sims 4, Game, bin res and over here it says video camera now this is going to pop up it's all the video camera settings i'm not sure about what the hell any of this does but this is where your camera manipulation comes into play you might notice some things over here that look intimidating it's really not though we're going to go over here to where it says camera 5 and camera 6 and where it says, I don't know how to pronounce that word, let's try it, interpolator time. <laughs> and you'll see that it's set to two seconds. I'm gonna change that to five, and I'm gonna change it for the other one as well, since those are the two angles that I used. And for position seven and eight, it's going to remain at two seconds. But now camera five and six should be five seconds. So make sure you save it. For me, it takes a few seconds for the game to refresh and understand this change. For you, it might be instantaneous. I don't know why it takes me a while. Sometimes I have to save it multiple times to get it to work. So now we're back in the game. We're back at angle five. And now when I press six, it takes five seconds to pan all the way back. And it's going to take five seconds to pan forward. Significantly longer than before. Another thing I want to talk about is making sure your sims always look consistent look the way you want them to look this is actually a good example okay since you know deandra and monroe are in love with each other even though this monroe thinks she's ugly you see how deandra is blushing because she's next to monroe obviously because she's in love with him you can remove that and that's where ui cheats come into play i think this is ui cheats ui cheats is such a god tier mod i love it so much with ui cheats you can remove a moodlet from a sim by simply right clicking it so we see over here how monroe's embarrassed i don't know why he just has lingering embarrassment and that moodlet's annoying i don't want him to be embarrassed so with ui cheats if i just right click on the moodlet it's gone so I wanna get rid of the moodlet that is responsible for giving Deandra the blushing effect because let's say I'm filming a scene and most of the scene, she's not blushing and then all of a sudden she blushes for like two clips. These might be minute details that you may not notice, but I will certainly notice. <laughs> and I wanna get rid of it. So I know the moodlet responsible for blushing is this one. Blushing, feeling flirty. Right click it and it's gone. And the blushing effect on her face is gone. And it also, um, it's helpful because the blushing effect on her face gets rid of the contour on her face because when this happens, the game changes her makeup to a blushing effect. And I don't want that. I want to keep her, her contour that gives her those high cheekbones. So now I'm going to demonstrate the tool mod. The tool mod is very useful, but it, at first, when I first used it, I found it so difficult. That might be just because I'm impatient and I really don't like read anything. I just kind of learn at my own pace and learn the way I want to. Don't be like me, I'm stubborn, but let's demonstrate it. So I'm going to cancel this animation now and we're gonna try a new one. I'm gonna just speed it up so they're done, they're done. Make sure that no other idle animation is playing, perfect. And I'm going to select a new animation. I'm gonna do one that makes them float. <laughs> I saw one where I was like kissing on the bed. Let's, there we go. Let, oh, that's not it. Great, now I gotta scroll back down a 
can find it. I hate that about this mod. I wish it would just like stay in the place it was, but whatever. Let's do girl, obviously, because she's the girl. And the same pose for him, but the boy. All right, so <laughs> they're kissing, obviously, and it's supposed to be on a bed. So you're supposed to put this, the teleporter, in the middle of the bed like this, two of them, and then the animation would play on the bed. But let's say I wanna make this on the couch, on the floor. Let's do the floor for now. It's not gonna look perfect, but I just want you guys to understand what I'm doing. So the tool mod basically helps you move sims any way you want not just sims but also for building purposes a lot of builders like to use this mod for building purposes and it is super helpful if i want to use an animation that's meant for a certain place like a bench or a bed or a sofa but i don't want to use it on the bed or the bench or the sofa i want to use it on the floor this is what this mod is useful for we are going to press shift and then left click on whatever sim we want and the tool bar is right here tool menu and it's going to have these five options for a sim at least elevate toggle active object which i love scale rotate and move i really don't know how to use move so i don't use it and i rarely use scale but i do use toggle elevate and rotate a lot for this we're going to use elevate it's going to select monroe with like a green transparent overlay and you get to move monroe up or down so let's say yeah i want them sitting on the floor let's let's just try and do negative one you can enter a value between negative 25 and 25. let's do negative one and see what it looks like oh <laughs> it's a little it's a little too low <laughs> it's a little too low so i'm gonna do the same thing to deandra just because i don't want to mess it up and forget but we're gonna try again we're going to move him a bit up more let's try point five see where that lands us Okay, we're getting a little better. Her face is in his crotch. We don't want that. So let's elevate her up as well by 0.5. It's still a little too high. As you can see, they're, they're floating just a tad bit. So let's try to put them down maybe negative 0.1 more. Not perfect, but better. It actually looks overall pretty good. Negative point one. Perfect. Now this animation can be used for the floor. We don't have to use it for the bed. And it works perfectly. And it's adorable. So this mod is very useful. Another thing this mod is super useful for. Let's cancel the animation. Yeah, they're on the floor. Um, you can just <laughs> shift click them. And I missed it. Reset them and they'll just go back to the position they were in. Another thing it's useful for is you can move them around wherever you want, which is so great. You don't have to have them walk or you don't have to do shift teleport, which might take a while. You can move them at your free will. Look at this. I'm moving her anywhere, everywhere. And what's great too is that you can move her off the lot, but you can move her into the street. You can move her onto another lot. <laughs> you can move her <laughs> over here. And for building purposes, if you're interested, um, you can also move stuff in the world. Uh, yeah, you can move this trash can wherever you want. Very useful mod. Now I wanna talk about how MCCC or MC Command Center is useful for making these videos. So one thing you can do with MCCC is you can change your sim's outfit without having, you know, do the whole change outfit and wait for the animation to play. You can instantly just change out their outfit. So I have all of Deandra's outfits. I don't know, let's change her into this red dress. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, and you could do the same thing to Monroe, obviously. Another thing that you can do is you could change a sim's emotion. This, I mean, I don't know how this would be essential necessarily for a series, unless you have on, you plan on having your sims talk as you're recording and not edit in the talking like I do. You can cheat your sims emotions and they'll, you know, sound different. Their tone will be different. More simlish will be unlocked. More interactions will be unlocked. And to do that, you just want to press MC cheats, cheat sim info, mood slash buff control, cheat emotional intensity, and then you have all of these 
emotions that'll play out. So right now you can see at the bottom, Monroe is confident. Let's change that to very angry. <laughs> it didn't change, meaning he has a mood that's stronger, um, controlling him from being angry. Let's remove it. Let's make him pissed. Now he's angry. <laughs> and it'll say, Furious, you cheated to get this moodlet, and it lasts for 20 days, which is crazy. Um, and you could just simply, with UI Cheats, right click to remove it again. UI Cheats is also useful if you want to change the time of the world you're in, but beware. If you change the time of the world you're in, it's going to have some negative effects on your Sims for a few Sim hours, probably. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So right now it's 5 p.m. Let's say I want it to be nighttime. I want it to be midnight. So you can right click the time and you could set a time jump, but make sure you set it to military time, not to, you know, the standard AM PM time. So if I want it to be, let's say 10 o'clock at night, that's 22 military time. So I would type in 22 and the world would instantly change to 10 PM. But you're gonna see some chaos happen on the screen. Since there's been a time jump, you can probably already see down below, Monroe has gotten a plethora of moodlets that just came <laughs> and went. Your sims are going to do some idle animations for some time. They might not work properly for quite some time. They might need to be reset. Sims around the world might go a little crazy. They might get a plethora of phone calls or notifications, um, especially the bigger the time jump you do. But, you know, sometimes, actually, they they stop doing the animations pretty quickly. But sometimes it's essential. Sometimes you want a scene that happens at the nighttime and one happens in the daytime. And you don't want to wait all these sim hours doing nothing for that time to occur. So you can just simply jump the time. Make sure you watch out for lag spikes. Um, I have a very powerful computer, but sometimes she still lags. And she has a lag spike and I have to redo the scene over again because I don't want that. I rewatched some of my old series videos and there's some lag spikes I've noticed. I doubt you guys have, but I have because <laughs> I'm like that. I'm going to notice things like that. So just keep that in mind. And real quickly, I want to show you guys the one optional mod I was talking about, which is Andrew's Studio Effect Player. So what Andrew's Studio Effect Player basically does is it plays any effect that EA has made. The thing about the Studio Effect Player you are responsible for finding the effect that you need. This little contraption, which is the effect player, is not going to have the effects pre-selected for you. You're going to have to select the effect and go online to find the code, I believe that's what it is, the code, meant to play that effect. And this is so time consuming and it is very frustrating. I wish there was a better way to do it, but hey, at least the mod exists. You can go onto Andrew Studio and find the list of all the effects and I will go ahead and show you guys what that looks like. So this is Andrew's studio. I will have the link down below. Um, and these are all his mods, pose player. This is the studio effect player. And if you go down here, it's going to have the list of all the in-game effects and it's going to have literally the entire list. And this, this list, I forget how many pages long it is, but all of this are the effects. So if you're looking for a very specific animation, you're going to have to search through this. It took me 40 minutes to go through this entire list by myself, looking for one specific effect and I couldn't find it. Once I find the effect I want, I make sure I write it down in a note on my computer because I don't wanna go through this all over again. But like I said, I will leave the link down below. So I'm gonna demonstrate to you how you would go about using it. So once you find whatever effect you wanted, you're just going to type it in here or you could paste it. I found one for a fire. I I hope this is the right one. Sometimes there's like so many different versions of the same effect and some of them don't work. They might be old. Let's see if it works. We're going to press OK. And then when you press live, there we go. The effect of a fire starts. And it's not a real fire. That's why they're not burst into flames right now. It's just the effect and it will last for the time it's supposed to last i believe whatever ea sets it to there are settings you can make to make it last a certain amount of time or loop but that is on andrew's studio effect page and like i said it'll be linked down below but it is very time consuming i really don't use it that much i think i've used it twice in the entirety of what are you laughing at in the entirety 
of making my series and you could just press stop and then it'll stop all right guys i think i went over basically everything there was to go over um when it came to making machinima in the sims 4 if you have any more questions or if i forgot anything let me know i'll try to help out with that hope you guys enjoyed my first youtube video have fun making machinima and i'll see you guys later bye